Hey y'all, welcome back to day nine of this RV renovation series. Um, today we are circling back to this um, couch right here. I'm gonna be making some end tables because there's a big gap on each side where this couch goes in. Um, so I wanna make a little something, something special for this. Okay, so obviously that was just me measuring and have to take the couch back off. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've taken this couch off and putting it back on, but that's okay. It fits perfectly over in this little corner since I haven't rebuilt the bed yet. Um, so the first thing that I'm gonna try to do is make this completely level with the pull out um, part that I've already made last uh, right here. So if you remember, this was just some two by fours that I cut up and then put some pine boards on top of that. Um, and so I'm putting a two by four strip down right here. And then I'm gonna put a pine board directly on top of that. That way it is completely level with the couch that's already there. Um, I could have made this differently, but it does the whatever, like less than two inches that it's raised up doesn't really matter to be honest with you. So that's why I'm just gonna make it level and we'll start with a clean slate. Um, so I started doing that and obviously, um, I will do the same thing with the other side. So now that it's flat, I'm going to go ahead and get a piece of five millimeter underlayment and just tack that in right on top. And that is actually going to be the bottom to our cabinet. Um, so I'll do the same thing with this side. The exception here is, um, I had to take some of that trim off. I did that on the other side. I just forgot to tell you that. Um, but the, that this one has a wire that's coming out. Um, it kind of feeds a light that's in the slide out and I need to move that wire up. So that's what I just did right there. Um, and I will have to connect a wire um, to that from my panel box um, and so I decided since I already have a wire there I was gonna go ahead and put some USB charging stations in here um, I thought that was a nice little touch and I have some spare wire laying around anyway so I figured mine as well so this is me just drilling a hole so that other wire can come back up through the slide and I'll tack that down as well so now that the bottom is built, I'm gonna go ahead and start building the framing for the actual um, little cabinet or cubby, whatever you wanna call it, end table itself. Um, so I am going to cut some three quarter inch strips out of that pine board that I had. I just had a bunch of extra pine board. So it's pretty much gonna be three quarter by three quarter. Um, and as you see right here, I have a like a plastic piece on the end that always gets like caught that I need to fix. So that's what I was doing right there. Um, but anyway, I cut just a bunch of this um, and then I can start building my framing after I have it all cut out. So now that I've ripped that down, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the pieces to size. Um, this'll make more sense once it all starts to come together. Um, but for now, just kind of follow along and see the whole process. So I'm gonna start by making the side pieces first. Um, these are gonna be identical on each side. Um, and so this is just that three quarter inch piece that I cut up. And then I have these cool little like corner clamps that I really like when I do small pieces. So I got these little corner clamps at like a, a I don't know, my neighbor does these um, like storage units and uh, uh, I went to one of his sales that he had one time and he had a whole bunch of these little corner clamps and he sold them to me for like $2. I think I have like eight or 10 of them. And anyway, so I really like them when I have like little tiny pieces like this because you see, I'm just tacking them in with a nail gun. Um, I think this is like inch and a half nails is what I'm using, but the nails in combination with the wood glue actually works really good for small pieces like this um, because it's really just too small to put screws in so that's why I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put some nails in it and um, obviously I do this twice the same on both sides because it's gonna be the same dimensions on both sides and I just kind of measure it out make sure they're good um, same thing for this this is going to be the front part of this little cubby cabinet um, same thing putting them in my little uh, clamp there and then with some wood glue on each side and then uh, stapling or nailing them in with my nail gun. Um, nothing crazy about this. So uh, the reason I like to assemble this outside of the camper is because it's a lot easier for me to make sure that this is square when it's outside of the camper versus if I try to assemble it piece by piece when I'm inside the camper. Now, if I'm doing bigger cabinets, I'll usually assemble it inside the camper. Um, but in that case, I use something way more thicker than like three quarter inch wood. But since these are just little like end tables and they're not structural and there's not gonna be a whole lot of weight on it, this is what I'm gonna do. 
So next we're gonna combine the front piece and the side piece. So you saw I just put some wood glue there. I put a little clamp on it um, to hold it together and then I will nail it in with my nail gun. Um, so pretty similar to everything else that I just did. And as you can see, pre-adjust your clamps beforehand because I didn't do that and it I took me five minutes just to adjust the dang clamp. So anyway, um, putting a bunch of staple or nails in there and then remember that you do have a left and a right. So this one's going to be the opposite of that one. Um, please don't make them the same because it will not work if you do that. So same thing for this side, clamping it in. Thankfully the clamps are already pre-adjusted for this one and then I just tack it in. Now next I'm gonna put just a little support piece in the middle um, and that's because I'm gonna end up tacking a piece of wood onto this. Um, it just gives it a little more structural stability since it is kind of a large area. I think it was like 20 something inches um, and I had scrap wood left over anyway so I figured I might as well. Um, so I just put some glue on it, I tacked it in, same thing with some nails and that was pretty much it. Just making sure it's relatively square. I'm not too super concerned if the middle support piece isn't perfectly square. All right, almost there. So this is going to be the um, basically finish the top piece. Um, so if you notice, there is no, um, the bottom piece isn't like a complete square. Um, could I have made it like that? Yes, but that's not typically how they make cabinets in RVs. Um, and if I screw it into the framing that's already there, like the framing in the slide, then it's not going to matter at all that there's no bottom piece because it's not really supporting anything anyway. Um, so this is pretty much how they manufacture them in RVs. I guess it's, I mean, you add up enough cabinets and it keeps the weight off. So I don't know, it just, it's always worked really well to me as long as, this is the kit catch, as long as you have like some sort of framing or some sort of stud or something like that to screw it directly into, which I know that I do because it's going to go basically all the way to the back of the slide and all the way to the front of the slide. So I know I have at least two points right there where it's going to get into the aluminum framing. All right, now it's time to put it in. Now you see why it's so much easier to just assemble it and then to put it in. Um, so I had to trim some of that um, trim that I already put on there. And so I just flipped it over to make sure that it was square. Um, and then I drilled some pilot holes right here where I'm going to attach it to the camper and to the slide itself. Um, I do recommend pilot holes because this is thin wood and it will split if you just try to drill um, a, or a screw through it. Uh, so I just, Go ahead and line it up. I mean, it's not super hard to do this. It's just a matter of making sure that it's not like lopsided when you put it in. Um, but that's pretty easy to tell with a square. So, I mean, it just takes some practice, I guess. Same thing with this, drilling some pilot holes, um, making sure it's square and leveled up. I did have to trim the trim piece that I put in on this side as well. And then I'm just screwing it in and making sure that everything is um, level and straight. And that is pretty much it for the framing part. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start putting the paneling on the side like I said I was gonna do. Um, and we're just gonna close in this entire box. So this is just eighth inch paneling, it's MDF. It's just the scraps that I had in the shop, but you can use whatever type of wood you want to use on this as long as you measure it and allocate the thickness for it. Um, I already planned on doing an eighth inch thickness for this, so that's why I use that. Um, so this is, um, I think these are maybe half inch um, staples that I'm using to attach the panels. Uh, and then I'm gonna do it on the side as well. And then also on the front. Now the front one, I actually made a little bit longer. That way it can go slightly uh, farther down the slide and um, in just a little bit, you're gonna see that I'm actually going to finish going around the slide with trim, not really trim, but it's kind of like framing at the bottom. That way it's gonna look seamless and not really like a pullout couch. And lastly for the boxes, I'm gonna put some corner trim on there. You don't have to do this, but it makes it look really nice. That's specifically why I put the two side pieces on first and then the front piece is if I didn't wanna put trim on it, but I already had some extra trim in the shop. So I figured mine as well, like a good finished look um, and I think it looks pretty good. So I did have to trim um, kind of a side off because the side where the couch sits um, is a little bit shorter and so I wanted it to go all the way down in the front so that's what I was doing was just trimming some of that up. 
Okay, now we're going to start on the front piece. So I don't know if you noticed um, where the slide out couch is. It kind of sits out farther. It's like three inches out. And so I'm actually going to make uh, two stationary pieces that will go basically on the corners of the slide and make it look like it's seamless. Um, so this is me just cutting out some framing pieces to the width that I needed. Um, and this will all kind of make a little more sense once I start assembling everything, just kind of like the cabinet. So just bear with me here. Um, I'm gonna start with the pieces on the side first and I measured basically um, how wide I needed this to come out in order to be flush with the side of the slide. Um, so whatever you decide to do, your measurements are gonna be different than mine just because this is a custom build. Um, so, and you notice all of my um, framing is not the same thickness and that's okay. Um, as long as the front face comes out as far as you need it to be, everything behind it doesn't matter because you're never gonna see it. So I'm just using some of that scrap wood that I had in the shop, um, and this actually ended up fitting perfectly. So I'm making two of these, one for each side, and um, you'll notice one is actually shorter than the other, and that is because there's a wheel well on the other side. Um, so I am basically making it shorter, that way it can clear the wheel well when Whenever the slide comes out or in. So now that I have those pieces made, I can go ahead and attach them to the side of the slide. Um, I just used two screws to drill directly into the aluminum frame that was already on the slide. Um, and this should sit flush with the box that I already have right there. Now I didn't show how I made this front piece because it was literally the same process and I figured that was repetitive enough. Um, but this little piece that I'm trying to screw directly into the frame right here, it's because there's not a good place to screw that front piece in. And so this is gonna act like a little shelf that that piece will sit on and then I can screw it in from the top and fasten it onto the slide that way. I also added that little piece that you see me screwing in right there on that one side because I wanted it to be able to touch the other piece that I made for the side of the slide. That way I can screw them together and that way I can make sure that that corner is perfectly square. So this is just me getting some um, inch and a half screws and screwing it directly in and then I screwed it from the top and that piece is fastened. Did the same thing on the other side and I'll end up um, upholstering this after I paint. Hope you guys are enjoying this. See you for day 10.